Hey gang, it's time for something completely different. This is an ESP Alexi Scythe, which is a massive guitar designed for Alexi Leho of the Finnish metal band Children of Bodom. And the owner of this instrument really likes it, except it's missing something. Um, I guess they left it off the uh, LTD model, which is a little um, preamp gain boost switch, which goes somewhere in here on Alexi's uh, stage instruments, the custom ones that ESP makes for him. And it's a really important thing. Um, he actually uses it all the time, except for short passages. So, uh, you know, when he turns it off, it becomes more of an unboost switch to him. In any event, uh, the owner wants it. And um, to that end, he was very intrepid and went out and found and imported this uh, little module for us that uh, will require some modifications to the instrument. And I'm going to install that for him. Should be pretty fun. You can almost hear them at ESP. What's that? You don't want to lay out the big bucks at the custom shop? And you say you might want to add that switch at a later date? No, no. Think again, buddy. We're just going to leave that part right out so there's no way you can do it and have it line up in the proper place. Not unless you're willing to do major surgery. <laughs> the first order of business is to make a new cover plate that will include the portion that they cut out. And uh, to do that, I'm using some super glue and masking tape to stick the old plate onto my new material there. That just makes it easier than trying to hold things with using your hands or something. That's much more accurate. So I'm drilling out the holes and then I'll use a very sharp scalpel to score around the perimeter and I will extend those lines there using some straight edges to give me a nice triangular shape. And after that I'll use the bandsaw to cut it out roughly and then uh, go at it with files and hand plane. Here's a tricky operation, uh, kind of scary. I'm using some super glue to stick two pieces of three quarter inch plywood directly to the surface of the guitar. You can see I'm using the new cover plate there as a reference so that uh, I'm making a template, basically building it in place. Um, so just, you know, gentle pressure, hold it in place till the glue dries. And I mean, this is not for novices. Uh, you have to know your way around a router to do this. You have to have a light touch, know which way to feed the bit and everything. I would never suggest that anyone who's, you know, not an experienced woodworker do this kind of thing on, especially someone else's guitar. You know, it takes some skill to do this. After that, I'll use a drill and the router again to remove the rest of the waste material. So up next, I have to contend with where I should position the switch, uh, the hole for the mini toggle here. And uh, I had a discussion with the owner, and he found some photographic material, and I did too. I cobbled it all together and made some um, little cut and paste images here to see where it should be. And as it turns out, it's different in every single guitar. It moves forwards and backwards and laterally. Um, every time they make a new one, I guess. I don't know. It's possible that the hole is drilled in the same location every time, but uh, the graphics just get applied slightly different, and so the relationship changes. In any case, I found what I consider a sort of a, a median location that's uh, not too forward, not too back, and has about the average distance I'm seeing in these pictures from this stripe here. So that's where I'm going to drill it. After drilling, I'm using a tapered reamer here. This is a violin maker's tool, and that just helps me size the hole perfectly and gives me nice clean margins. In terms of positioning for the switch, I don't think we could ask for better. That turned out great. So we'll get in there with some shielding paint. This is the good stuff. It's nickel based. And uh, you have to be careful though, because while it's wet, it's really toxic. I mean, you need the respirator and the gloves and the whole bit. So here I'm soldering on the old wiring harness that goes to the jack, and I'll use that as a fishing line to pull the new harness through. And uh, this makes quick work of what can be a really annoying procedure at times. Manufacturers, why do you do this? Come up with a nice color-coded selection of wires. Everything works out great until I look at these two wires that come from the board. You got a green one and a white one, and in my case, they have been changed to an orange one and a black one but not the orange and black that uh, could be confused with the ones that go to the output jack. So now I'm looking at the board and I'm assuming I've got it the right way, but I won't know until I plug it in. This could have been averted. So here's the next mystery. Got everything wired up just the way it says until we get to this one here. This green wire goes to pickup selector in brackets input. Now there isn't a pickup selector on this guitar. There's only one pickup, 
So I'm assuming this wire will go to the pickup. Then the last wire down here seems to go to, is this a symbol for ground? I don't know. I'm assuming it's ground. Okay, so we got it all straightened out. This green wire is in fact um, attached to the hot lead of the pickup. And this little guy here is, I think, a ground wire. Um, I suppose you could drag all of the wires from the tremolo claw and everything else to that point. Instead, I went with the more traditional star grounding system that you find in most guitars. Took everything to the back of the volume pot, including that wire, um, preventing, you know, ground loops and that kind of stuff, which wouldn't really be an issue in this guitar anyway, but it looks familiar, so that's the way I did it. Have the preamp here set up to Alexi's favorite settings. There are little uh, uh, switches here, two and four are down. Number three is disengaged, and so is number one. There is a little trim pot here where you can dial in the intensity. They say he uses between 50 and 80. I've got it about 70. Um, put the switch in place here and found a spot for the battery. It's kind of a tight squeeze. Uh, I went with some Velcro here just to hold it in position. This is one of those guitars where you don't want the battery flopping around in there because this is actually fairly fragile. It's just relying on the, um, the lugs of the volume pot to hold it up so don't want to bash that stuff around too much and uh, everything fits all the wiring is fairly straightforward um, I don't know if I'd want to do this in a guitar with more volume and tone controls there's not very much space left in here although I suppose you could put a tone there like a mini pot uh, why I don't know um, other than that it's all set and ready to button up and give her a whirl